Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Red World, in which we are playing as the American People's Commonwealth, in which, well, in a fractured America. So basically, what if America lost the Cold War, and America has split up, even though, I don't know why Illinois owns St. Louis, but there's probably reasons for that. Anyways, if you liked about the, the great person, uh, you know, Kaiser 1871, he passed away, unfortunately. Please go right ahead. This is for you, Tom. But President Chomsky's New Year Address. My fellow Americans, when the time comes each year to address you in this unique New Year Address, I'm always faced with something the authors of this Commonwealth would know as writer's block. There are so many struggles and issues within our nation, across the borders surrounding us, and even the seas to our east, that the short time I'm given to personally speak to my people and simply cannot allow total coverage. Which is why, on this great day of celebration for the world, I am forced to find the most pressing complication. And at this point, I believe it lies in the Commonwealth itself. Since the revolution of 1988, we've taken great strides in national, social, and economic development, forging the American People's Commonwealth into an industrial superpower unmatched by most around the planet. And yet, in that same time frame, the political deadlock strangling Philadelphia has uh, remained uh, runs resolved for too long, causing distress for all Americans who wish to see a government working in their favor. And as your president, I cannot promise the great political reforms of past years, as it is my firm belief that the revolutionary period is long gone. We, as a country, are settling into normalcy, and yet Philadelphia has failed to move along with every other hard-working citizen. So this year, my New Year address is not directed at the millions watching from the TV set seats. I'm speaking straight to the heart of American injustice. Those who seek to bring down my presidency and everything it stands for at the expense of the average family they see as below them. And whatever 2010 may have in store for us, we're assured that if a newfound effort for the common good is not established soon, the office of president may have to be utilized at its full potential. Okay, President Noam Chomsky. If you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. He's definitely a leader. But actually, we can't even do a focus yet. Oh, look at that. But also, if you want to see about the history of this, please let me know in the comments below. We have the history of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, how we got here. And since we're here, let's go and train our Navy a little bit. We have only three ships under William J. Fallon, which is not great, but it is what it is. And we have Peter Shoemaker. We have Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn, Michael Flynn. And then Colin Powell as leading our generals. But future of the Commonwealth. Born out of two divisions, that of the U.S. and that of the Communist world, the American People's Commonwealth has remained isolated for two decades. As the Soviet world orders stretched from Europe to Asia, our brothers who saw the terror of the USSR struggled to stay afloat. While many have fallen in the past years, the ideals of revolutionary socialism are still solidified in the lives of everyday Americans as well as in the many nations across the world. But in order to spread this ideal, we must ask ourselves what future is there for the Commonwealth. Should we reach outwards across the seas, or will, would uniting the former U.S. once and for all elevate us to a position of world power we deserve? Death to the remnants, death to the Soviets, and southern border wall. Well, the recent influx of refugees coming from the American Republic, usually originating in the Midwest, some members of the Central Committee have suggested a southern border wall be built to defend the Commonwealth against undesired immigration. The President declared his deep opposition to this plan, but he also said in his input during a heated debate that if the Chamber passes a bill to build such immigration defenses, he will still reluctantly sign it into immediate action. So the question is now, does the bill have enough support in our only legislative body? Too expensive? The bill passes... We need an even more secure wall. We actually get more political power, huh? Um, I'm not sure this has any effect on us, but... Illegal immigrants from other parts of America? Hmm, too expensive the bill passes. Or we get political power. Even though it's going to hurt our consumer goods. It's going to hurt our recruitable population for a while? Which is kind of weird, that recruitable population goes down, but only for 250 days. Hmm, factory output, that's fine. We didn't, we didn't need a bill here, right? We're still building 50, and that's not too bad, right? That's not too bad. Currently get 1.60 political power. Today we have the National Spirits standing firm. Political deadlock, which looks very bad. We also have Western corruption, as well as appalling recognition, followed with American isolation, and we also have building a wall, of course. Yazov is dead. Oh, poor Yazov. The Indiana governor disappears. Governor of Indiana Kathy Davis has seemingly disappeared off the face of the earth. Failing to attend any meetings at the state assembly, her chief of staff traveled to her rural home to ensure she was well, but instead discovered that one of the most powerful women in the Commonwealth was nowhere to be found. He proceeded to inform the appropriate authorities who are awaiting confirmation from President Chomsky to initiate an investigation, however. Our head of state doing such a thing would be seen as an intrusion of state's rights, <clears throat> despite it literally being the only way to investigate the whereabouts of state leaders. And this certainly raises the possibility of Mrs. Davis simply retreating on an undocumented holiday. Certain investigation? Maybe she should go, ah, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure how would we get, was it Pray for New York? 5-1. Oh, 5-1 has occurred. Oh, boy. Uh, mm, you know what? Let's start an investigation immediately. Let's see. Begin investigation. The chair, new chairman. Zyuganov. Cool. Philadelphia intercepts terrorist ch chatter. Counter-terrorist military divisions in Philadelphia have intercepted terrorist chatter from Indiana and Western Ohio, informing the president that Kathy 
Davis' disappearance could more than likely be an abduction at the hands of right-wing or communist terrorists. As of now, they've been unable to determine whether this chatter represents the former or latter of our enemies, but Chomsky is de clearly determined to save his governor from certain torture and possible death at the hands of vile radicals. Good thing we started that investigation. Very good. We have no manpower. Look at that. But we've rescued Kathy Davis. <clears throat> A sudden raid in southern Indiana has led to the discovery and subsequent rescue of Cuth Governor Kathy Davis, with no casualties on her side and total destruction of the small terror cell. With Davis on her way to Indianapolis in a secure motorcade, rumors are already flying around the country as people start wondering again who would have taken her. Whether they were communist radicals or right-wing terrorists from the south, most citizens of Indiana are just glad that their faithful leaders returned with minimal injuries. President Chomsky was pressed for immediate order to investigate her disappearance, rather than shying away in an attempt to avoid anger from the old guard or intervening in state affairs and state affairs, despite his constitutional obligations. Great. He's getting old, man. Catherine, she returns to Indianapolis. The abducted gov governor arrived in Indiana's capital quite a few hours ago via motorcade, but she required time to rest at her second home and regain energy lost in those frightening days. Now, with that restored energy, she returned to the state assembly in order to deliver a speech to fellow loyal colleagues, and in turn, the frightened people of Indiana. After telling almost every detail of a horrific and surely life-threatening ordeal, her closing remarks called on all people of Indiana to rise up against terrorism and face her fears with resilience. A standing ovation from the state assembly was seen on TV sets across her entire commonwealth, and with every citizen captivated by the speed and efficiency of her police and bringing her home safely. Welcome back. It's a very, very weird world. Very weird. Especially when the, when the Commonwealth owns Indiana. I mean, I can understand like Indianapolis, maybe in the suburbs of uh, the around area around, around Louisville, and definitely in you know, like Chicago. Chicago land. Oh, there goes Princess Diana. Oh boy. The White Phoenix. Indiana secret police have filed a report on the White Phoenix, a mysterious figure Governor Davis told them all her captors spoke of with ominous fear and admiration. Well, not much yet is known about the apparent leader of the, their crushed terror cell, President Chomsky. Will surely wish to be aware of any further developments. Perhaps this was the White Phoenix's grand scheme, and its failure will hopefully send him spiraling into obscurity at the hands of the other terrorist leaders within the American Republic and abroad. Very interesting, but it is March 7th, and... Oh, Governor makes yearly pilgrimage. Uh, Vermont Governor Bernie Sanders has made his yearly pilgrimage to the graves of his wife and children on March 8th of 1990, while Bernie was on a goodwill trip to Portugal representing Philadelphia's new government. <clears throat> The Radical Socialists and Central Committee aligned Governor of Vermont orchestrated a significant purge of all opposition within the state. Without any approval from the Capitol, he illegally used state troopers to round up all those opposed to the Central Committee and had them shot. These included his wife, Jane Sanders, and the three children aged 19, 15, and 14. Bernie arrived back in the Commonwealth upon hearing the news, and only a day after President Noam Chomsky immediately removed the governor from office and had, it, had him tried by the a central committee who reluctantly called for the Allies' execution by firing squad every single year. The current governor makes a pilgrimage to the graves, vowing to never let those who took so much from him to take so much from the country again 20 years ago. There's a lot of events. I kind of like it. Somewhat. You know, I like the events, but, uh, you know, there's a so far a good good amount. We'll say a good amount. Pretty nice. And oh, we're doing quite well building ourselves up. I love it. Blah, 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 blah. And I think I've heard that these guys can fall into a civil war at some point. Oh, we got some. Oh, look at that. Volunteer only, more factory output, limited conscription, disarm nation. Well, what do we got here? Industrial concerns, nothing. No, oh, nothing unique. Pretty, pretty normal stuff, huh? Tried and true. Okay. Well, all right. We have enough PP. Ooh, attack and defense. You know, what? I'm gonna wait. Let's save our PP for now. Maybe. Oh, we can't. Ooh, we can't even go here. Fo export focus. We can go to free trade. And we have Chris Hedges. Oh, Vermont insurgency ends, but we also have Robert Reich. We have John Kerry, of course, and Daniel Ellsberg. All right. Since 2008, an insurgency has gripped the people of Vermont, forcing them into watching behind their backs and fearing those who have their friends for, who have been their friends for many years. It infected the lives of every single citizen, preying on the fears of the unknown. Whether whatever terrifying attack could lunge out from the darkness, but the ongoing 2008 insurgency ended exactly how it began, with an attack of unprecedented proportions. During the early months of that year, fanatic supporters of a conspiracy theorist who claims to be the victim and almost perpetrator of the greatest American terrorist attack in history gathered in the mountains to fight against our government. Their first move was a direct attack on the capital, Montpellier, unleashing devastation upon Bernie Sanders' official home in the center of the city. The governor's house was partially destroyed by two bombs detonated on one side, aimed at murdering the governor himself. Fortunately for our loyal public servant, he was not home at the time, unbeknownst to the terrorists. That was two years ago, and now the tables have turned with an enormous military raid in the mountains of Vermont. After hours of explosions, fires, and shouting, all those inside were murdered. For the first time in the Commonwealth's history, Governor Sanders issued a shoot-to-kill order on all those inside, telling the media they could simply not be allowed to live for the sake of the people. Finally, it's all over, and, uh, rising you, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. But, oh, and we'll get probably part two. There you go. If you like to read about that, please go ahead. An interesting read, but not exactly realistic. Do we have another ship? No. I'm not really sure where to, where to put these guys. 
Chomsky meet Sanders. President Noam Chomsky flew to Vermont today to meet with Governor Bernie Sanders in order to congratulate him for his historic victory over the insurgents. The 2008 to 2010 terrorist movement will be remembered for years to come, and the commander in chief made sure that his political frenemy was aware of Philadelphia's infinite gratitude for ending it alone. Not only, not once, were Commonwealth troops used in the campaign against discussing conspiracy theories in his gang, with Sanders opting to only utilize state troopers. The president arrived at governor, the government house for a brief televised meeting between the two prominent politicians, but a private trip to the nearby woods gave them time to recall fond memories during the 1988 revolution when the two briefly worked side by side. This is the first time since Sanders' ascension to becoming the most powerful person in Vermont that Chomsky has set foot in his state. But since this historic victory, it will certainly not be the last. Okay. And we are led by oh, Chomsky, who was, who was losing support, but we also have... Ooh, so we have these guys on the right. Revolutionary faction of the IWW, we have the Communist Party with Sam Webb, Bernie Sanders leads the Moderate Socialists, Social Democrats are led by Keith Ellison, oh god, uh, Democratic Party is Liberals, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, which makes sense, United Commonwealth Party, John Kasich, is that the guy from Ohio? He's a centrist, but even though he has the fascist uh, kind of colors, the brown color, Republican Renewal, Newt Gingrich, is he from New England? Huh, Socialist, Social Alliance, National Bolshevik, Will, Will Williams, Will Williams, that seems so weird. Why would you name your first name after your last name? But whatever. Uh, Royalist Americans. Yuck. Uh, America First. Tom Hofling. Okay. Uh, and we have National Socialist Movement. Just just going to be just straight up honest with that. Just We're just National Socialists here, apparently. Uh, Jeff Shupp. Huh. Okay. Well. Oh, and now we have the Mayday Attack. On a splendid day of celebration, the American People's Commonwealth has been attacked at the heart of its greatest city. Just before 9 in the morning, a hijacked aircraft from Chicago International collided with Tower 1 at the National Economic Center, bringing with it a terrifying explosion of fire and debris. As New York's waking populace stood with shock and horror at the sight of jumping workers and flames engulfing every floor near the observation deck, it didn't take long for a second speeding jet to hit Tower 2. At this point, the entire nation and much of the world had tuned into breaking news of a terrorist attack on American soil, the first of the scale in history. Every minute, emergency services rushed to the scene attempting to take thousands to safety with dwindling resources available. But then almost an hour later, all those watching must have gasped simultaneously at the most horrific thing to be seen on TV. Tower 1 came crum crumbling down on top of itself, killing a thousand within and too many below the building, already struggling to escape the flames that had almost trapped them within their offices. Minutes later, Tower 2 fell to its demise in a similar fashion, tipping over an almost at the very end and colliding with a nearby building, killing a hundred more. Now as unprecedented dust clouds clears and the world remains in utter shock at this tragic attack on humanity, no one is quite sure what will happen next. 5-1 will not be an infamous day. Now, are there going to be conspiracy theories like what happens here? Like, you know, people did stuff. It was all an inside job. Can we have conspiracy theories, theories? But pray for New York. May Day shall now be both a day of celebration and mourning, but soon it shall become a day when all Americans join together through united social spirit. For now, we pray for, you know, for New York. World leaders call president. Heads of state and heads of government from around the world have called Air Force One's secure line to offer their sincere condolences the day after this terrible terrorist attack in New York. No one could reach a commander-in-chief as everything unfolded as he had been taken to a bunker in Philadelphia, then on to Air Force One as worrying intelligence reports indicated that the nation's, nation's capital is the next target. Today, however, the lines are open, outpourings of sorrow and sympathy from the world leaders reached Noam Chomsky as he set a course for New York. Some were clearly reluctant and spoke of solidarity through greeted teeth, but this is still a momentous occurrence as the most... Of the world doesn't even recognize a commonwealth as a legitimate nation, proven by its lack of representation within the UN. Even Donald Rumsfeld briefly spoke with one of his nemesis, while Warsaw Pact leaders and chairman Gennady Zyuganov refused to acknowledge that this was a tragedy going on about their lives as though nothing terrible had occurred at a, at, on our soil. We thank them, thousands of volunteers in New York. Thousands of courageous volunteers from all walks of life have arrived in the city that never sleeps to help in the recovery effort. An unimaginable amount of steel still lies twisted and gnarled in Manhattan, as emergency services are overloaded and hospitals are packed to the limits. Footage of these thousands crossing into Manhattan have certainly inspired many Americans, just who just yesterday were struck by the greatest tragedy in a very long time. While the nation mourns, perhaps there really is light at the end of the tunnel with a horrific event could reunify this crumbling commonwealth. International airports close indefinitely. International airports within the American People's Commonwealth have been closed indefinitely, ironically, by an in-flight decree from President Chomsky, and based on the opinions of various advisors on board. Traveling to New York, Chomsky was advised that another attack could occur soon if large planes continued operations throughout the weeks following this horrific attack as of now. The number of Americans and foreigners stranded at airports is rapidly rising, and some members of the Central Committee have condemned the ex executive decree due to its supposedly severely limiting economic development in coming weeks. The President's Chief of Staff has refused to confirm or deny whether this closure will extend to the domestic airports as well, but a more concrete government plan will surely be released soon before another attack could be imminent. Interesting. Chomsky meets engineering 
emergency services. While President Chomsky was in hiding during the attack on New York's National Economic Center, it didn't take long for him to convince his chief of staff and military leaders that he should return to address the shattered Commonwealth. He arrived in New York just hours ago on Air Force One to deliver a short speech to local press, but quickly continued on his way towards Manhattan. The chiefs of police, fire, and ambulance awaited their commander-in-chief's speech, but instead Chomsky decided to simply meet with emergency service workers to help both and emotionally support them during a testing time. In particular, eight men and women in the fire department have committed suicide in just the past day after experiencing the most shocking and horrific event in their careers. The president made a grief statement for journalists at City Hall after being with the bravest within New York for more than two hours. He is expected to address the nation as soon as he returns to Philadelphia, but there could be more work to do in the city that hit so devastatingly yesterday. The bravest is in recognition and flags raised from half-mast. Initially decreed that will swiftly pass by the Central Committee, all national and state flags were to be lowered at half-mast after May's tragic terrorist attack. Since then, our nation has gone through a time of unity, mourning, and combined perseverance, as the odds seemed impossible stacked, impossibly stacked against us. Nevertheless, the time must eventually come to end the grieving process and start moving on forwards, with uh, with the first step in that initiative being raise, uh, raising all facts from half-mast. Citizens of our Commonwealth are free to maintain the patriotic decorations at half-mast, but government institutions, landmarks, and anything else associated with the nation's inner workings must raise their flags. It will show to the world that we have managed to come out of 5-1 stronger than ever. Okay. And which, I kind of want to go with fire the New York governor because I want to go down a certain route. But New York's incompetent governor failed to stop the terrorist attacks in his biggest city. President Chomsky should order local trade councils and other political entities to remove him from office as soon as possible. Gennady Zuganov says we had it coming. In a glorified press conference at the Kremlin, Chairman of the Soviet Union Gennady Zuganov himself stated that the Commonwealth had it coming, failing to label this a terrorist attack instead. He declared that May Day's tragedy was proof of our failure more than likely an act perpetrated by communist freedom fighters. After this relatively brief statement to eager state-controlled journalists, the chairman returned to his grand office as if nothing had happened. While the statement was surely meant to divide our nation and certainly united us even further, now it is clear that this Commonwealth still has a common enemy and that the Soviet establishment leadership simply does not care about a plan in the face of such horrific violence, that dude. And Davis re-elected as UAPR General Secretary. She looks kind of crazy, not going to lie. Her reign secured, Davis is now free to build her glorious union, but the president's speech. The essence of humanity in this testing world is not how we do battle or how we bring the fight to our bitter enemies, because by bringing violence and horror to our enemies doesn't elevate us. It demeans us, it brings us lower than anyone on this blue marble, and yet we will still choose to stand upon a pedestal and claim this commonwealth and its followers are supreme above all. No, that is not the essence of humanity, I believe. And I know so many of those living in fear of multiple creeping specters from the Atlantic or our southern borders believe that the foundation of humanity is the ability to rise up from the ashes. To rise up from the bitterness and hatred of our enemies, not with spears, but with arsenals of freedom. Of the knowledge that we are all humane. They are, they are the inhuman. And they are the demons ready to slaughter thousands in the name of their wicked leader and a wicked system. Standing upon this podium in a city struck by tragedy, I realize what the great poets of years gone by knew about our world, and I realize that our rise is not unlike the poetic justice of anything written about basic humanity in testing times. Today I remember Tennyson's Ulysses, and to all Americans from the East Coast to the West Coast, I shall speak it not from my heart, but from the heart of millions. We are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven. That which we are, we are, one equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive to seek, to find, and not to yield. President Noam Chomsky, New York. Hail to the chief. More stability, I lose a little bit of political power, but that's okay, as we're firing the governor of New York, Commonwealth rallies behind New York. President Chomsky's deeply moving speech in New York City's hall uh, chamber has resonated throughout the American populace, alongside the council of TV's a televised minutes-long standing ovation for the commander-in-chief. According to official reports from several departments, so thousands are still flocking to New York in an effort to volunteer and help their fellow human beings, and they have only been re-energized by this amazing address. Posters with closing lines, Tennyson's Ulysses, are being printed not just by government organizations, but also private citizens, who have taken them as an inspirational quote to unite an only recently bonding American populace. For now, the Commonwealth has rallied behind New York in an unprecedented wave of compassion. Wonderful stuff? Threaten the old guard. Democratic socialism and social democracy are not the final goals of the old guard. The wish for a democratic internationalist form of communism? Something we simply cannot abide. The Gates Declaration. Until now, the Technology, technology Council's reclusive ch chief, Bill Gates, has remained on the sidelines, preferring to remain p apolitical in almost every situation, even when terrorist attacks occur. But it seems May Day has struck a chord with the once enemy of the state and abductee of a more aggressive council in the past. In a nationally televised address from his home in Manhattan, Gates declared the time has come for new leadership in the Commonwealth, whether it came from President Chomsky's removal or the rejuvenation and restructuring of the Central Committee. He himself stated that this is certainly not an endorsement of either faction within Philadelphia's government but instead a declaration of solidarity with the American people, not their appointed and elected officials. The aptly named Gates Declaration has divided many on two sides of supporting Philadelphia's establishment and a rapidly growing grassroots opposition. Why did he have to do that? 
because he's Bill Gates. Central Committee blames Chomsky. As part of their emergency convention just days after the May Day attack, <clears throat> Philadelphia's Central Committee has already blamed Noam Chomsky for his unimaginable declaration of war. They've also claimed that the evidence supporting a far-right attack on our nation is clear, continuing to point out how the president has failed to formulate a response to celebrations in the American Republic. While many have supported the statements from Philadelphia and called for Chomsky to resign, there's also overwhelming approval for the president flowing in from his inspiring speech in New York and the effort he went through to directly meet those affected by tragedy. Only five members of the committee have even traveled to New York. Interesting. That's probably the biggest gripe I have with the mod so far, just the events. Uh, sometimes, not this one's good, but sometimes like the, it ends with like, it just says interesting or okay or sounds cool, something like that, you know. But Chomsky returns to Philadelphia. The president has returned to Philadelphia to address a second emergency session of this rebellious com central committee. In the past few days, members have blasted Chomsky for supposed neglect of intelligence services and security in major cities, a major cause for the NEC terrorist attack. However, after fiery Fiery rhetoric from seats was also met by a surprisingly ferocious speech from the, on, from the aging anarcho-syndicalist. While he was certainly bitter at a blatant dissent from the new guard faction with, within a supposedly loyal chamber, no one expected such a wave of anger and blame coming from Chomsky's mouth. Reversing their calls for his impeachment, the president stated that the committee before him had failed America's people by purposefully continuing a disastrous political deadlock. He also noted that hardly any of them had come to New York to either simply pay their respects or help as volunteers like thousands of other Americans. It was at this point when temporary CC member Permanent Technolo Technology Council advisor John Holdren, standing in for a bedridden politician, shut up and screamed obscenities at Chomsky, labeling him a, labeling him a moronic anti-American preacher straight from the depths of heck. Holdren was subsequently removed from the chamber and Chomsky continued with his now more subdued speech. There was no standing ovation this time. Not even tragedy can unite our politicians. Just remember, but never let a good crisis go to waste. Oh, man. Well, at least there's a lot of ends. New... York Governor Returns from Vacation Governor of New York State Bill de Blasio has finally returned from his vacation in Bhutan, much to the anger of his constituents. According to the eminent politician and one of the only neutral leaders between the old and new guard factions, circumstances within the small Himalayan nation meant he heard about Mayday's tragedy an unfortunate number of days after it occurred. Of course, this could be true, but many have said Blasio's vacation was to the capital of Timpu, a region certainly not off the grid. This friction between different accounts and truth and falsity has put the governor in a precarious position. Journalists within New York have been ordered to spin his late return into a positive light and enforce Blasio's attempts and statements. But questions surrounding the legitimacy of those claiming will surely cause great distress for aforementioned journalists. Whether they tell the line or not, clearly now, New York is extremely bitter about their supposed res representative relaxing under the snow-capped peaks while his larger city mourns thousands of deaths. Perhaps he'll resign. Probably not. When do governors actually resign? But new operating system. The Technology Council has just announced the development of a new operating system for the Commonwealth, which will go hand in hand with recent unveiling plans for a personal computer to fit the modern age. For years, our nation has been leading computer technology advancement around the world simply due to the work of one New York based trade council, working tirelessly every day to bring our people the best they can deliver. The new and improved, uh, new and improved impro uh, operating system, a significant upgrade from the 2007 installment, will be rolled out in the coming weeks to each Commonwealth state and remains free of charge as always. Can't wait. Journalists resign. Prominent and low-level journalists within New York State media have simultaneously resigned from their positions this morning, refusing to defend Governor de Blasio's vacation and apparent fabrication of what really happened in Bhutan. In a joint statement that was cut from the air before they could finish, a rebellious group claimed that censorship had gone too far and a new media bill had to be introduced that would reinforce greater freedom of the press. In turn, they effectively endorsed President Chomsky's plan for restructuring freedom of speech, association, and demonstration, something that he hadn't been able to pass through the almost totalitarian Central Committee. The governor is reportedly furious at this insubordination, but many Americans have taken the side of these journalists, demanding an end to injustices in the media. It's likely that this series of events will draw de Blasio closer to the New Guard faction unless he resigns in the coming weeks and days. Okay, and also I did say it earlier, but we are... He's fired, okay? Um... This is on historical. Exercising his extraordinary powers as president of the American People's Commonwealth, Noam Chomsky has suddenly fired New York Governor Bill de Blasio after extensive consultation with trade councils and representatives from the state itself. This comes as criticisms of the governor mounted after his extended vacation in Bhutan, which many say was a waste of taxpayers' money and delayed a united response to the May Day's attack. With a furious governor removed from his, off from his once secure office, the New York Trade Council representatives with one seat in every national representative body must appoint a successor. In most states where the incumbent leader is only removed from the office when their term expires and not due to a scandal such as in this situation. A successor has already been pre-selected by the governor themselves. But because de Blasio is hardly far into his term as a state leader, it is up to this convention of trade council members to decide who takes charge of the commonwealth's most powerful state. Good riddance. Can you actually remove a governor like that? I guess with the America People's Commonwealth, but I don't think the president, at least in our timeline right now, can remove a governor. That'd be kind of cool if you could. But, hmm. Threaten the old guard? Yes, please. 
far-right underground claims responsibility. A previously unheard of far-right underground group in Illinois and Indiana regions have claimed the responsibility for 5-1. The White American Liberation Front, an apparently anti- uh, uh, an apparently white supremacist radical group aimed at overthrowing Philadelphia's socialist government and Atlanta's Democratic administration, proclaimed a new beginning for the Commonwealth. According to the mass leader, May Day's tragedy was just the beginning of a series of attacks against her people and they would never stop until her reign was over. Intelligence agencies are scrambling to uncover more details about this group, but so far efforts have proven fruitless. However, it's becoming increasingly clear that they, have, they could have direct connections to the Vermont insurgency that ended earlier this year. This suspicion led to Governor Bernie Sanders, publicly declaring that he will work with Philadelphia in any way that will result in the destruction of this repulsive organization. This is surprising coming from one of the most moderate and anti-authoritarian governors in America and an unofficial leader of the direct democracy movement. What do we expect? Man, can you imagine getting a tattoo of the SS on your face? My gosh. I guess some people do. I guess, yeah, technically some people do. I don't, but... That is just, wow. Such a committee begins building, or building receives bomb threat. Reports are coming in from now the nation's capital indicating that the Central Committee building has received a bomb threat from the same group claiming responsibility for 5-1. Police are taking no precautions in an event like this with members inside immediately evacuating and staff quickly following. However, either terrorists threatening to destroy the heart of America's government canceled their plans at the last minute, or it was simply a way to incite terror within the highest levels of President Chomsky's administration. Whether a real threat was present today or not, we can be certain that those members who were frightened their lives could be taken away in an instant by the people they had never seen before. Terrorism scares everyone now. Are we going to have a... What is another... I forget. Whatever. Uh, Bernie's speech. This should be the speech of the century. One that captivates all Americans and inspires them to follow his young movement. Hijack planes crashes. Flight 170 from Chicago to Columbus has just departed from Martin Luther King Jr. Airport when right-wing Christian fundamentalists seized control from an unsuspecting pilot and cabin crew. Less than two minutes later, their jet crashed on the outskirts of Chicago and almost immediately exploded in a ball of flame. It didn't take long for emergency services to arrive at the scene, and it took even less time for them to determine that no one had survived this horrific attack or incident. Over 100 Americans were killed today in a second terrorist attack this year, but this time their plan was thankfully foiled, more than likely by brave, courageous, brave and courageous passengers on board that flight. An investigation is still being conducted as more evidence is compiled, but President Chomsky is already expected to be Chicago-bound for a show of solidarity with all American cities in time of need. Quite terrible. Uh, but we are going to superior firepower just in case. Um, I won't try to shoot because I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't remember how what they do here in the American People's Commonwealth, but superior firepower is always just tried and true and safe. Just safe enough for us to use. Do we have any national campaign? Oh, refugees are arriving in Sicily. Okay. And at call for an election? Well, we can't quite do that, but that's okay. The mod moves pretty gosh darn fast, but uh, we got a lot of events. Not bad for naval XP, though. Not bad. Oh, well, next second will be down in about two months. Not too bad. Bernie speech. Trade council members st stealing state funds. Oh no! An extensive investigation sponsored by the Central Committee has caught members of the Northeast Bound or Based Agricultural Council stealing state funds intended for investment. We're currently aware, unaware, as to how much of the taxpayers' money has been taken over the years. But for now, the investigation has concluded that there are millions of dollars that could that could have been properly invested in the Commonwealth's agricultural sector. Prominent members of the National Council were quickly to note, or quick to note, after these discoveries were released to the public, it is only a few select few within their clique that are guilty of embezzlement. Whether this time it is true or not will surely be uncovered by appropriate authorities, but the Agricultural Council's legitimacy has certainly been placed into question. Currently, the people are asking, where did the money go? Mysterious. I wonder where it went. And we will have to fight these guys down here. It's very weird that the American Republic does have Washington, D.C., not even all of North Virginia. It makes more sense that they had Northern Virginia and then they had DC because it gets split it up, but whatever. It is what it is. Rallying support. Ooh. Drift to moderate socialism? Um, I like the civilian factory construction speed. And slightly more research speed, too. That's not bad. Um, I kind of prefer, though, the influence of Boston just to get more factories. Rumors suggest that Boston supports Sanders greatly almost as much as his home state of Vermont. I always forget that Bernie Sanders is from, from Vermont. I always get that and New Hampshire mixed up all the time. Oh, someone devolves, dissolves. Combined Armed Syndicates has capitulated. ACS. Cool. I always forget these from Vermont. I always get these two mixed up. Like, you know, from someone who doesn't live in New England. These states just seem almost exactly the same. Then again, I guess you could say that about the Midwest. And even region to the south and the west coast. But, I don't know. They're so close. They, and they fit almost a, a rectangle. Together they fit a rectangle. I'm just like... They're the same thing. Vermont's on the left. I gotta remember. Vermont on the left. New Hampshire on the right. British... Oh. Well, that's not good. There's a lot of terrorist attacks going on. Mm, that's not good. A Bernie speech. Amos 525, but let justice roll on like a river. 
Righteousness like a never falling stream. Justice, treating others the way they want to be treated, or we want to be treated. Treating all people, no matter their race, color, stature, and life, with respect and with all dignity. Now, here's my point. Some of you may agree with me, and some of you may not, but in my view, it would be hard for anyone in this room today to make the case of the American People's Commonwealth, a country that all of us love, that we are a just society, or anything resembling a just society today. In the Commonwealth today, there's a massive injustice in every sense of the word. It is rampant. We live, and I hope all of you know this, in the wealthiest country on the American continent. But most Americans don't know that, because almost all that wealth and income is going to the elites in Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, and every single trade council that leeches off our citizens. Now that's the truth. We're living at a time where a handful of people have political power behind our comprehension, giving them the ability to maintain tyrannical control over every aspect of our society for the rest of the Commonwealth's history. But... At the very same moment, there are millions of people who are struggling to feed their families. They're struggling to put a roof over their heads. They're struggling to find a place in our beautiful commonwealth. And yet, with all that power concentrated in each metropolis, the elites do nothing. This is why we, as a united American populace, must begin the new political revolution. Exciting, or excellent, closing lines. Very nice. After this, we're probably going to go ahead and grab this one so we can build more cities. New England trade councils, but les la, c'est la band. Pittsburgh hosts... Radio host Lula Sela has been suddenly banned by the governor of Pennsylvania, Jennifer Rompolo, for encouraging disharmony. Oh, disharmony, huh? That's what you call it now. The, people, the popular media personality was criticized by various state administration officials for labeling the governor, allies, and the Central Committee as a gang of self-absorbed mini-Stalins, a statement that brought her significant praise from fellow entertainers across the country. Yesterday, her social media account was suspended for undisclosed reasons, followed by a letter from the governor herself warning Sela that further protest activities would be met with harsh consequences. Pittsburgh Faber, however, refused to cooperate following up on her previous statements by bringing in a fellow anti-Philadelphia activist on a radio show. The to discuss current government policy and the influence of the new guard faction members on supposedly independent local administrations. This once again brought upon her the wrath of the Rompolo, signing an order that would legally cease all of Sella's operations with immediate effect. Supporters of the radio former Minneapolis native protested against the move both on the social media and in the streets, chanting, Many Stalins in unison. That mini Trotsky will be silenced. The New England Trade Council shall have more power within Philadelphia's central government, as they are rapidly turning to Sanders' defense. Good. Debate begins in Pennsylvania. Two days after the banning of Lula Sela from the activities on the, on the airwaves, a fresh debate has begun in Pennsylvania. On display is the full authoritarian potential of each state government, forgotten for many years as no entertainers or political activists have dared to insult leaders since a harsh crackdown in Ohio gave birth to stronger regulations on almost every single Commonwealth state. Now, however, opponents and supporters of the constitutional powers of Pennsylvania Governor Jennifer Rompolo are de debating across the state as to whether the powers themselves should even exist. For both factions within the Central Committee, this is a pivotal issue on, the other, on one hand. The New Guard explicitly advocates for authoritarian measures to crack down under dissent within the Commonwealth, but retaining these constitutional Constitutional powers would give that strength to old guard state administrations. With almost no limits, governors could shut down pro central committee and sentiment with their own states. Hopefully, this does not spread. But we'll see what happens. Probably with another event very soon. I'm glad I got some water to keep reading. Oh boy. Oh boy. Islamic State of Libya has capitulated. Silla takes issue to the Supreme Court. The Commonwealth Supreme Court in Philadelphia is the highest judicial court in the land, open to all citizens who feel as though they are facing injustice. Its most notable use is the ability to intercept 1990s Constitution and deem actions by either state governments or the national administration as constitutionally acceptable or not. Today, Pittsburgh radio host and activist Lula Silla has taken the issue in subsequent political debate concerning abuse of powers to the Supreme Court. On the building steps, she declared what Rompolo had done was simply unacceptable and the Commonwealth Constitution would be on her side as it should be for every citizen. It was hours until she exited the building for the first time in her life, but Sela appeared to be in good spirits and more than likely was certain that the court would stick by her by her against governor's pencil government. Many, both in the state and outside, however, are skeptical as various clauses within the, the national constitution do allude that to this, not at all being an abuse of power, in fact. It is believed that the governor could have enacted far worse punishment for her arch nemesis, radio host. Supreme Court will decide your fate. Man, that really sucks. Your governor and your arch nemesis is a radio host. Man, that seems weird, but the World Linguistics Conference. For the first time since the 1980s, President Noam Chomsky has been able to embrace his prominence in linguistics as a science. Seen by most of us as the father of modern linguistics, president, the president called for a world conference just a month ago, and finally the day has come to convene it. From all around the world, those simply either interested in the field of study, up to the most eminent linguists, arrived in Philadelphia for the Commonwealth's first event of its kind. The conference opened with a speech from Chomsky himself, who thanked everyone for coming, proceeded to detail his history and their science, and how he gradually became not just a prominent figure, but eventually the political leader of a pre-collapse movement. For most in the room, the conference wasn't just about linguistics, but also an unprecedented vision into Noam Chomsky's life after ascension to the presidency, due to the commander-in-chief's continuing reclusion when not in the capital. Philadelphia's opulent event will close in just under
calendar a week when attendees will be invited to Chomsky's home for a final gathering. A tremendously great success. And protected networks, very nice. Oh, we got a lot of stuff down here, nice. Let's grab some of that. Oh, I had to click on that once. And it is still 2011. But we can do stuff ahead of time, we're doing that as well. Let's grab some better artillery, perhaps. 2010 artillery. Tanks, looking not great. Uh, let's get some guns. QCW 05s. Close quarter weapons from 2005, maybe? Queen Elizabeth has been humiliated. That's not good. Intriguing. Look at that. Vermont resignation. Here is governor. Um, I don't want to do that one. Push for greater freedoms? Yeah, I'll do that one. Uh, actually, we could probably wait to get that most of that effect. Uh, no, we'll push for greater freedoms first. Philadelphia must hear our loud voice and understand that we are demanding a great, greater freedoms for the American people as a whole. Not bad. How are we building? Not bad. Lula Sela versus State of Pennsylvania. Cascadia rebels. Oh. Whoa. In a nationally televised decision, the Supreme Court justices announced that they de deemed Governor Jennifer Rampolo's ban constitutionally acceptable. There's no mention of protection for citizens against these consequences in the 1990 Constitution, and there's an abundance of clauses that ensures each state governor is legally able to ban Americans from inciting disharmony. Lula Sella left the building in tears, unable to speak to journalists waiting on the steps, and refused to comment on the matter hours later. It seems the unexpected result had shattered her will to continue fighting against the state government, also shown by her many supporters suddenly losing an intense fervor that had strengthened her position before the historic ruling. Pennsylvania's Rapolo is reportedly glad that the highest judicial body in the Commonwealth supported her actions, but officially stated that this was the expected result, and that the governor was never for one second believed her ban was constitutionally illegal. Rapolo is the, the Supreme Court. That seems kind of hmm, questionable, but who am I? I am just a guy on the internet. The business plot. I love the business plot. Oh, wait. Oh, no. David Koch. Oh, that's not good. I don't like that then. To propose changes to history curriculum. A member of the Education Council has pushed for changes to the National History Curriculum, declaring in a surprise press release that the current, uh, current content is unsatisfactory for all students of this great country. While there are some minor adjustments that are yet to be touched on by the media, the most notable and publicized is a change to discourse concerning the old Confederacy. This one council member and some supporters outside the organizational body believe the current curriculum enforces a completely biased view against Confederate states, labeling it an evil fascist slave state. Fascist slave state? Fascism wasn't even around back then. She has insisted, instead proposed, that it adopt a less black and white position, touching on subjects such as states' rights and opposition to federal encroachment on other personal liberties of the time. The eventual decision, however, comes to President Chomsky as to whether he should sign the proposal into law. If the proposal should be arrested, not everything is black and white. Nothing is changing, just let them complain. That's a nice flag. Anyways, um, let's see. Everything is black and white. So we want the left, moderate socialists. National conservatism. We have that here? National Conservative, I guess, Newt Gingrich. But this one also does Revolutionary Socialism as well, which is us. So we don't want to increase our thing. Nothing is changing, just let them complain. Well, whoever proposes should be arrested. There we go. We'll arrest everyone we don't like. Nice, push for greater freedoms. And meet with the communists? Why not? Sanders could convince communists that they have a better chance of coming to power in a true democracy where the people directly elect their representatives and the president. Jeb Bush elected. Actually, let's go. I'm gonna grab this one just because it hurts our political power, but we get more drift to moderate socialism. Support for Bernie Sanders' mo moderate democratic movement is growing, but we should begin holding even more rise around the Commonwealth. Eugene Debs Day. Eugene Debs was an American Union leader, one of the founding members of the IWW, and five times a candidate of the Socialist Party of America for President of the U.S. Through his presidential candidates as well as his work for labor movements, Debs eventually became one of the best-known socialists living in the U.S.A. He was noted for his oratory and speech denouncing American participation in World War One, which led to his second arrest in 1918. His was convicted under the Sedition Act of 1918 and sentenced to a term of 10 years, but President Warren Harding commuted his sentence in December of 1921. Debs died in 1926, not long after being admitted to a sanatorium due to his cardiovascular problems that he developed during his time in prison. Today, the American people celebrate his birth and the legacy of true socialism he left behind, attempting to convert the populace as a whole towards a better future. Although, unfortunately, in his time he failed, and yet the Commonwealth finally followed in his footsteps to revolt against capitalism in 1988. We will always remember you when we get a whole one pee pee. Nice. Nice. So yeah, let's get some more daily moderate social support. I think that'd be pretty good. Independent labor wins snap elections. Okay. Well, good luck with that labor. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. And we've got two weeks left for that. And when's the next technology done? In a little bit more than a month. And we're doing pretty well in civvies. 15-4. I want to get... I want to change this. And this stuff is okay. It's not really super important. Who do you have here? Gilbert, John Floyd. Uh, oh, Cascading People's Commonwealth. Oh, boy. Democratic activist demand change. Okay, well. Rallying support, shall we? We shall. Supporters of radical uh, 
Vermont politician Bernie Sanders and advocates for Democratic rule are becoming to demand changes within with a far greater fervor than ever before. Instead of attempting to cooperate with local governments to work towards a moderated solution, the aforementioned activists believe that there's only one path towards restoration of the U.S. of A. and a democratic progressive government. They call it the new political revolution, and while it doesn't condone physical violence against opponents, it certainly is a movement of significant verbal violence. Syndicalists, anarchists, committee, allies, and many other revolutionary socialists are seen as enemies of the new uprising, and these activists will stop at nothing to get the, their savior Bernie into the nation's size office, as long as he doesn't involve fighting between fellow Americans. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious, and they say the best jokes over there. Meet with the conservatives? Uh, let's meet with uh, communists first, yeah. Yeah, convince communists that they have a better chance of coming to power in a true democracy. Yeah, let's go with that one. And tech is almost done. So after this, can we get any better planes? Uh, we do need probably carrier fighters. That would probably be very good to do. Well, is that a carrier fighter? For 2010? It might be. I'm not sure if that really is, but we'll accept it for now. Up next, since we're doing carrier stuff, we got that one already. Nice. That's coming along. That's good. Uh, let's grab some of that too. And planes are nice. Naval stuff is nice as well. Oh, cars, anything else here? Military police, logistics, recon might be really good to grab. Not too much, we're pretty okay on whatever we have right now. We do have carriers and do want to focus on carriers quite a bit. Uh, do we do have? We have cruiser holes and destroyer holes. We're making some cruiser holes, so maybe we want to focus more on cruisers, but we're looking pretty good as well. Hmm. Fleet retreat speed. Well, let's go ahead and grab some of this. Extraction is always good to do. Even though we could do 19, 2011 tech already, but whatever. Thank you. Oh, that's a 50-day focus. Oh, wow. Should we raise a conscription? Volunteer only is 0. 0.5? Holy crap, 0. 0.1? Oh, uh, let's go limiting. Why not? We're going to hurt Alpha a little bit, but that's right. Desalon assassin. Uh-oh. Tragic loss for our family. Hey, we'll meet the commies. I want to save this one for last. That'd be good. Support for democracy grows. It's no longer moderate governors in the, gov in the Commonwealth showing overwhelming support for the democracy in our nation, as opinion polls show public disapproval of centralized socialism has skyrocketed in recent weeks. Bernie Sanders' speech in Boston on justice, inequality, and political concentration seems to have struck a chord with the general populace as unprecedented crowds head around the country to offer support for a new political revolution. According to local media, Sanders is now the second most popular Commonwealth politician behind Noam Chomsky, immediately granted this approval on an enormous platform throughout through that one address. Philadelphia should be ready. And at least we're mobilizing slightly more, even though we have political deadlock and building a wall. Oh, we saw that. Calvin Park stabbing. Oh, boy. Located in northwest Chicago, Calvin Park High School was completely unknown to the American people until a tragic incident this morning. Almost 20 children witnessed the brutal stabbing and murder of a fellow student at the hands of seniors James Denyer and Lily Richards. According to those present, the two were screaming bloody fascist, Republican dog, and other hateful lines at a younger classmate who was lying on the ground in excruciating pain. The boy was rushed to a local hospital as soon as authorities were called, but died inside the ambulance on his way. While their principal has expelled the two students with immediate effect, Denyer and Richards are yet to be placed in police custody, most to the apparent anger of the victim's family. It did, didn't take long for the story to reach the entire nation, but once it did, a debate surrounding political beliefs in schools and the Commonwealth as a whole had picked up an immense pace. Tragic. That's all he says. Oh, it's just tragic. But we with conservatives. Everyone is a friend of Bernie, as he intends to create a new America that pushes no one to the sidelines. Look at that. While Sanders is extremely progressive, conservative voices deserve to be heard. You get more conservative, national conservative, centrist, and nationalism support. Oh. James Denyer and Lily Richards in courts. Students from Kelvin Park High School, accused of infamously stabbing and murdering their fellow classmate in broad daylight, are currently in court for their actions just two weeks ago. Uh, Judge Maya Satoru Ng will have an undisclosed amount of time to decide their fate, assuring local media that the jury will have the final say. Some call for an iron fist from the judge, demanding that she reject the jury's decision that they allow the two teenagers to walk free. Wow. Many politicians, on the other hand, believe that their actions at the school are not grounds for jail time due to the nature of this incident in particular. According to the same politicians, the victim was a fascist or reactionary and had no place in her society anyway, more than likely on his way to joining rebel forces across the southern border once he had come of age. Okay. But Chicago? Chicago? I don't know, man. Sanders meets the communist self. From the glorious revolution of 1988 to the late months of 1999, the Communist Party of the American People's Commonwealth was totally banned. Any members not hidden from Philadelphia were in prison, exiled, or managed to escape on their own to the UAPR. In President Chomsky's Millennium Plan, however, he intended to restore many democratic institutions that he believed had been crushed by the initial revolution. As part of this plan, the prominent anarcho syndicalists signed an executive order that lifted this ban and freed all political prisoners that associated with the Communist Party. The one catch that Central Committee members demanded in order to ensure the support for the executive order was a ban on the party engaging in any political office activities. This meant 
movement that communists could associate freely and campaign for the movement, among many other activities, but could never assent to state or national government in any capacity. Such a situation has remained the status quo since 2000, but Bernie Sanders intends to change that. After meeting with party leaders and figures within the communist movement, he has just announced that under his leadership, every single political party will be allowed to enter political office in the name of true, true direct democracy. A very risky step, I would agree, indeed. My support, very nice. So right now, 57% uh, support, not bad. Judge gives teens prison time. Judge Maya Soto Ning has given Denier and Richards a lenient sentence of five years jail time in response to the murder of a fellow student less than a month ago. Her quick and decisive rulings left the entire country divided over whether this violated the standard judicial practice or if she was acting well within her rights and made the correct decision. The governor of Illinois has already faced calls to sack Maya Soto Ning with his own constituents linking her to radical far-right groups in the south and just west past the Illinois border. The victim's family, on the other hand, has hailed this as a victory for justice, calling the Chicago's judge a hero despite significant backlash backlash from both the teens' families themselves and half the Commonwealth. This could either be the second or the moment Satoru Ng is propelled to a higher judicial position or the moment where she sees her career collapse in on itself. Okay. Sure. Hardline Socialist Outrage Hardline Socialists have taken to the side of Denier and Richards in this historic court case of epic proportions, leaving the judge Soto Ng a reactionary for giving them present time. Many seem to think it was perfectly acceptable for the teens to weed out and rightfully purge supposed fascists from communist society, as long as they got the job done right. <laughs> Supporters of the judge are naturally horrified at these claims, as each local media station battles those across state lines in a debate that has fired up the entire country. Despite the possibility of greater friction between fellow citizens of this great country, Noam Chomsky has refused to comment on the issues as of now. Okay. Okay, sure, why not? The Hardline Socialists are outraged. Okay, they're, out they're outraged, whatever. But happy 2011, everyone. Man, I remember 2011. That was a, that was a weird year for me. So is 2010, especially 2009, but Illinois governor fires a judge. The governor of the small Illinois state has removed uh, Judge so Maya Sotero Ng from her position in the capital. Just a week after ruling against Kelvin Park students, outrage and humiliation from the general populace eventually convinced the governor to make a decision concerning an issue swooping Noam Chomsky's once pol politically peaceful nation. Significant consultation with advisors in Chicago and the judge's judicial opponents has led to Illinois' most powerful politician deciding that Sotero Ng should be fired with immediate effect. Supporters are already taking to the streets to protest his executive order, calling for Noam Chomsky to take immediate action against the governor, while those vehemently in opposition after her celebrate by sending their sincerest thanks. Okay. Just, okay, just to fire her. And the Vermont resignation. Bernie Sanders can't push for his election as president if he still occupies the office of Vermont governor. By resigning, he opens up this opportunity and shows to the American people that he is serious about his movement. And the judge was replaced by hardline socialists. Maya Sotero Ng has been reformly, formally replaced as judge by hardline socialists. Her position remains vacant for almost a week until the governor narrowed down his shortlist to one candidate who will be sworn in tomorrow. The Commonwealth is already cooling down after unprecedented ferocious debates surrounding the stabbing at Calvin Park High School. Northwest Chicago's public school remains closed, but is set to reopen its doors to students in the coming days, at least until the case of Denier and Richards can be reviewed a second time. Speculation is swirling around the second review, with political commentators from local news stations stating the general consensus that is Sotero Ng's replacement will give the two a far more lenient sentencing. Okay. Sanders meets with the conservatives. Bernie Sanders held a meeting with prominent conservatives within the Commonwealth who aim to restore the U.S. under a less corrupt system and with more direct democracy. Despite his advocacy for extremely progressive ideals, Sanders has in the past stated his willingness to work with all legitimate parties in order to find the most practical solution. And by working with conservatives on the issues of democracy, this is the perfect opportunity for him to show the nation that his values can truly be put into practice when the time comes. As a start, contrast to Noam Chomsky, who refuses to cooperate with advocates of the capitalist economic system. Teens given lenient sentence. Despite the initial five-year jail time in itself being a lenient sentence, Judge Maya Soteros Ng's hardline socialist replacement has granted James uh, Dayer and Lily Richards a historically easy escape from prison. For the next two weeks, they'll remain in the county juvenile jail until they're granted release, upon which both are required to perform 100 hours of community service from that day onwards. Already headlines across the nation are either praising the new Chicago judge or calling for the removal by the president, but the latter demands have already been shot down by our head of state, who doesn't, want it, who doesn't wish to become involved in local issues. Sanders in the committee. The new governor of Vermont has just officially proposed Bernie Sanders' membership within the Central Committee as a representative for his home state. However, it may take a while for the Vermont Trade Councils to accept without hesitation. Get more uh, support of moderate socialism and political power.
Royal palaces. Oh, they marry? Well, good for them. Who cares? Uh, family of victim flees the country. The small family of Denier and Richard's late victim have fled the Commonwealth that night. Neighbors reportedly saw them packing just after common dinner time in the suburbs and disappeared the next morning, leaving even even leaving one in the kitchen like some. Their self-exiles worried many on the political scene, as their victimhood could become a significant tool if they decide to campaign against the government. Great Lakes and Illinois presidents of the past have notoriously used escapees from the Commonwealth to fuel hate against us, solidifying their isolationist stance and ensuring that those families remain a political tool to use later on. At the moment, though, we can't be sure where the Hermosa family fled to, if they even crossed our western borders at all. For all we know, officials of the Repu American Republic are already have them safe and sound. Okay, welcome to Wisconsin. Is that... I guess Great Lakes Republic is up there. Wisconsin seems like a divided place. Democratic Alliance, huh? Moderate Socialist. David Koch. Is it Koch brother? I like this guy's hat. Covington? Ooh. Wow. Utah? Mike, leave it. Delay? Love it. Texas is led by, was it Rick Perry, I think, or something like that? Yeah, Rick Perry. Arizona is led by some dude, Harry Mitchell. Bernie Sanders resigns as governor. And Angela Davis, who looks just kind of crazy. Sanders in the committee. While not necessary to run for national political office, Bernie Sanders has suddenly tendered his resignation to Vermont's representatives and each trade council, who subsequently but reluctantly accepted. The state's beloved leader can no longer unite them against common enemies and in particular defend Vermont as spectacularly as he did against the infamous insurgency not long ago. However, the resignation comes as an enormous popularity boost for the rising star in American politics, showing to the general populace that he is willing to sacrifice everything to commit to his political revolution and fight to the figure of death. Some political commentators, on the other hand, loyal to the old guard opponents of the Democratic progressive, call this a political stunt orchestrated by the Sanders campaign team to deliver maximum results across the board. Whatever the case, this has certainly struck a major blow to not just the Central Committee, but also to President Chomsky, who is currently remaining silent on the rapidly rising popularity of Bernie Sanders. Very cool. And we have Sanders in the committee. Exploit factional divide. Staying firm. Um... That seems okay. We can probably do that. Support from workers. Direct and grassroots support is necessary in this political climate. That way we can show that the workers support our movements both over the old and the new guard. Nice. That stuff is all a little bit ahead of time. We can grab some more death charge throws because we do have the naval XP for that. And we can do that stuff there too. I do want some cats. I kind of prefer cats over tactical bombers because cats just has more of an effect. Uh, aircraft carrier fighters. That's fine. We can grab that. We will we'll need some naval bombers too as well though. Light tanks. We're making some medium tanks I believe. Yeah, main battle tanks. So, the wall's been complete. The Central Committee's branch out of a small wall stretching from one end of our southern border to the other has finally been completed. The final place, or piece, replaced a weak fence border in Kentucky, which has been in the past hilariously failed to stop any refugees or radical terrorists from coming across. Now it seems this formidable wall pro provides greater protection for our nation against foreign threats, as radical right-wing groups have been known to only come directly across the border, rather than risk being captured by airport or coastal security. While workers placed down the section of the wall and ensured it would never topple, Noam Chomsky declared to the mass of journalists and fellow political colleagues that the country will never now forever be safe from reactionary communist invasion. Very good. Bernie appointed to committee. After a series of negotiations between Vermont representatives and the politicians on a national level, the Trade Council has decided to appoint Bernie Sanders as the member of the Central Committee. Those in support of the revolutionary voted in favor of his membership due to their belief that he would rule over time, expand influence within Philadelphia, and eventually be selected as Noam Chomsky's successor. Opponents still voted in favor, on the other hand, assume that granting him a fancy title within our nation's highest legislative body will appease him, and the rough, unpredictable national political process that will wear down this measly state's worker. No one at this moment knows what Sanders', Sanders true plans are within the committee, but opponents shouldn't be so sure of his weakness with it, within a different environment. We shall see. And we're doing currently support from workers. And up next, exploit a faction divide. Sanders is neither a member of the old guard or the new guard. This grants him the unique opportunity to exploit this faction of divide and show to the Commonwealth's populace that this political system doesn't exactly work effectively. And we'll get rid of standing firm, huh? What is standing firm? Okay, so we'll... Oh. That's actually not bad to have. Drift of communism goes down. Um, the Communist Party, of course, doesn't really matter too much. Because these guys are revolution revolutionary socialists. This is still going up a little bit more, which is nice. But at least these guys don't have a lot of uh, influence anymore. So let's grab some more output, shall we? Yes, we shall. Good. So now we have support from workers, which helps consumer goods, factory output, decryption. Factory recovery rate is very, very nice. Depth church throwers are very good. Let's come back over here and grab some more output, or cap at least, which will increase our output. And we are training some of our guys just because we can. And we went through army XP, that's okay, but whatever. Actually, we get how much today? 0 0.007? That's not terrible. Uh, we should get some more daily army XP, that'd be kind of nice. Operative slots, John Kerry. Yeah, this is, this stuff is all okay. 
Oh, I like that. Well, maybe not like it, but I don't like losing stability, but that gives it a lot more political power. Even though it doesn't really seem like it does too much. New boss and members? Small donations? Oh, daily political power gain, yes. What is this, on the Twitch or YouTube live streaming? Small donations. An overwhelming amount of small donations looks better than a handful of enormous donations from those with more privileges than the average American. More daily political power. Foreign subversive activities efficiency goes down. And drift to moderate socialism, plus 0%. I love it, plus point zero zero. Who would want any more support for moderate socialism? The faction divide deepens. A decades-long faction divide exists between the new and old guards has deepened in recent weeks. As state governors and trade councils chiefs use local media to direct their insulting comments at central committee members, and those same members use the chair floor to blast prominent opposition figures. This rift between the two main ideologies within a commonwealth have brought a shocking drop of support for both parties in the issue. A public approval at this point for the committee, Central Committee as a whole stands just at over 25%, while popularity of old guard members has dropped to its lowest ever percentage of 41. This worsening rift has granted a recently appointed member Bernie Sanders an unprecedented opportunity to overthrow the political establishment and present himself as a stable, more bipartisan choice in this mess. Perhaps he is. Perhaps he is. Perhaps that's the way we're going to go down this way, to get good old Papa Bernie. I think I should play Chomsky sometime, as well as Bill Gates. Mr. Microchips, as some would call him. <laughs> oh, people, never change, never change. Because even if you want them to change, they still won't. Just saying. Anyways, anyways. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, planes? We love casts. We love planes to go boom, boom, boom. We definitely need more of that, though. 15 divisions is not bad, though. That's actually pretty good. I kind of like that a lot. Small donations. Standards at the podium. Our democratic, favorite democratic activist gets closer to the presidency every day. Perhaps it's time for him to officially form a political party to rival the IWW and fight for central control over the central committee. Or control over the central committee. What does it be called? Instead of moderate socialists? What does it be called? Socialist, right? Let's create the socialist party. Cool. And then, ooh, unite all Americans. Eugene Debsay, if you like your brothers, please go right ahead. We will always remember you. Unite all Americans. We can do stability. We're all Americans despite our race, gender, sexuality, and anything else that might be used to define us. This is the essence of our campaign, and something that those tall, totalitarian communists in Philadelphia don't seem to understand. Very cool. Oh, and we got some research done. Improved industrial technology. Awesome, awesome. Get some more extraction, because who doesn't love extracting things? Oh, whatever we want to extract, we can't, because we don't have enough of whatever we need. Hmm. Uh, let's go with turkey. Give us one. Unite all Americans. Standing at this chamber podium for the first, very first time in his career, Bernie Sanders made an entirely unexpected announcement, catching fellow members as well as the presiding president off guard. In the name of democracy and a new socialist identity, the prominent moderate politician from Vermont officially created his own party to be represented in the Central Committee Chamber. The Commonwealth Socialist Party is supposedly a big time political organization aimed at uniting those in support of many political economic policies, but vehemently in opposition to authoritarianism and the Trade Council system. This will be the first time since the signing of the 1990 Constitution that a party other than the political wing of the IWW has held a seat within the, con within the committee. Despite this peculiar situation, there's nothing constitutionally stopping Sanders from creating his own party and rebelling against the organization he once called home. Same face, new name. And new Boston members. Is there any other focus we can do right now? No, we gotta wait. Politicians and union activists from Boston and other areas of New England are being sworn in across Philadelphia. This is the pro this is probably the greatest political shakeup in a Commonwealth's short history. And we get more political power, which is nice. Active sworn is very nice as well. It's almost 10 12, so let's just go and grab some of this. And some radar as well, because I love radar. Good. Military staff. Barstow? Defense under James Gano. Huh. Well, mm, 10, 12. I guess we could come over here. Motorized. Let's go small arms. Why not? This one, electronics. I usually almost do this one. Let's go electronics. Aircraft. I usually do this one. So let's do something else, maybe. Naval calf. Eh, nothing else would really interest me there. New boss and members. Nice. Internal support. Now, advocacy for a movement isn't just coming from the people. It's coming from inside the government. Which we get less division recovery rate, less factory output, more decryption power, and less drift at revolutionary socialism. That seems pretty good for us. Alright, ship designer, I guess we'll do the generic one. And for tanks, I don't know if we need to keep the PP or not, but we've already got everything one here, so combat training, each generation chance, maximum, uh, artillery, why not? Oh, that's 150, that's a lot. That's actually cost quite a bit, holy crud. That is a little ton. But internal support will be next, with finishing up the next our last focus within like five days. Not bad. New Boston, Boston Democrats to join committee. 
Unexpected by incumbent new guard members within the Central Committee, their own representatives from Massachusetts have just simultaneously removed them from office. Their relatively unknown replacements are Democratic activists from Boston, radical and unwavering supporters of Bernie Sanders. Such a move by an old guard state governor has shocked much of the Commonwealth, but as this amounts of as as this amount of USA restoration is, is that is the most that have ever been held seats within the Central Committee. And if a trend continues of representatives replacing members in Philadelphia, moderates could can dominate the advisory board or body and influence a new presidential election within the chamber. The presidency is still safe for now with initial leadership election. With the IWW seats being lost to the Socialist Party left and right and center in recent weeks, the time has finally come to initiate a leadership election and complete Bernie Sanders' rise to the presidency. We lose a crud ton of political power and get way more modern socialism and some revolutionary socialism. We get the beginning of a new era, more population, dividend recovery rate, and drift to moderate socialism, but plus 0.00 for 70 days. Huh, I like mobile defense. Close one. Yes, it will be done. Cool. And after that, we'll get some radar. It is 10 12, so probably gun stuff. Yes, we can. Nice. Let's get some defense. M2 and N120 millimeter M75s. Nice. Followed up with prepare for the inauguration. 84 day focus. Wow. Despite Sanders being elected Commonwealth president, Noam Chomsky is still technically the incumbent commander in chief. The former's inauguration, however, will finally bring him to the highest office in the land. And the Socialist Party becomes the ruling party, which is nice. This takes quite a while to get through here. That's okay, though. And this one, Transitional Government in Ethiopia, nice. This focus tree, this for uh, begin investigation, is extremely long. Wow, look at that. It goes all the way down here, push for UN membership. United American Commonwealth, that looks really cool. Modern heavy equipment, nice. And let's go get some more gun stuff. Airburst weapons, nice. Oh, more divisions. Or another division. Oh, do we get another one made as well, looks like, maybe? No, just, just one? Okay, well, it is what it is. Oh, we're doing okay on fuel as well. Um, are you still training? Oh, we have oh, we have another carrier as well, look at that. We have a carrier. We have two carriers. Not bad. We need some, we need some cast, though, fighters. Some more just planes in general, but all right. Prepare for the inauguration, my friends. I want to see Bernie in... The presidency before we end here, though. Bernie Sanders elected president. In the past few weeks, state governors have surprisingly replaced their representatives in Philadelphia with strong allies of Vermont revolutionary Bernie Sanders, perhaps no coincidentally, after lengthy meetings with the man himself. As a result of the swift transition of power between the new guard factions and a rising moderate modern democratic coalition, the new central committee has just elected a new Commonwealth president. To the surprise of the entire nation, members were called for an emergency session without Noam Chomsky being present this morning. In the session, more than half of the chamber demanded a fresh leadership election, an act they had refrained from until holding the balance of power. Eventually, the acting speaker was forced to officially call for the vote to comments, much to the confusion between anger and joy of the new Guard faction members. While this vote would surely mean the end of President Chomsky, it would also seal the fate of the revolutionary socialists as a dying force. Their fears were proven less than 30 minutes later, as the last ballots were counted and Vermont Representative Bernie Sanders won the election. Noam Chomsky now remains a lame duck president, pending the former future's inauguration. That happened quickly. Very quickly. And you know what? That's okay. That is totally a-okay. Well, these lectures are actually okay to make. Compromising information given to Gates. Chief of American Technology Council Bill Gates has been handing compromising information concerning incoming President-elect Bernie Sanders, whose inauguration approaches quickly. The classified documents seem to suggest that Sanders' chief of staffs and manager of his official national campaign to be... Uh, to be elected president, so funds from the Vermont government for his own personal use. While the documents fail to mention that the money was spent on, it does state that not long after the theft, a new home in Boston was gifted to Mr. Sanders by his chief of staff, costing significant amounts of money for a state governor. While this might seem like incriminating information, it could be easily be false. And if it is true, then there is no evidence suggesting that President-elect Sanders has any knowledge of such a crime committed. Perhaps it's best for Gates to let this slide and try to wonder why someone will give this to him and who. Burn it, burn it. More documents handed to Gates. Just two days after Bill Gates burnt documents that could implicate Bernie Sanders' chief of staff for corruption, a manila envelope arrived under his door in the waking hours of the morning. What Chief of Technology Council found instead shocked him to the core, not, and not just because of what it suggested, but because of what hard evidence it gave supporting the suggestions. Now the prominent but secluded politician must make the most honest or most difficult decision of his life. Ever releases these new documents, now he runs the risk of being taken out by those who wish for them to remain hidden. But can he afford to wait that long? When anything could happen. Or perhaps they should just burn like all the other classified documents. Wait for the inauguration. Uh, the public ones never know. I'm not sure this is good or bad. So we'll come back and... If this bites us in the butt, that's not really good. But just, uh, just burn it. Yeah, just burn it. Just burn things. Oh, well, that's good. The socialist part is becoming very strong, which is nice. 
moderate hardware, very good, it is 2012, so let's grab some fuel storage, because we can. Oh, we're running out of fuel, that's not good. But we are doing quite well on civvies, which I am very, 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 very pleased with. Actually, we're doing so well, let's build up a military factory. Quite a few of them, actually. So one thing, one line going military factories, another line going for civvies. I think that's quite good. This is taking a long time to do, but I guess after that, I guess we have to do or restore Congress or restore Boston. Yeah, we'll do this one eventually. Boston Constitution. Bernie Sanders has ascended to the presidency, and this new constitution shall bring back true democracy to the Commonwealth. So eventually, we remove political deadlock, which is nice. Uh, so you get Sonia Sotomayor, silent lawyer, Dave Suckerman, Howard Dean, and you get the Boston Constitution. Cool. Armored cars? Why not? And we're almost out of our deficit of political power. But come on, we've waited this long in this episode. If you're still watching, please, and thank you very much for watching and continue to watch. I appreciate it. You guys have no fuel, but train anyways. Fighters? Yes, please. Drones are nice and all, but... Mm, yeah. It's okay. 1013. Ooh. What do we want to do here? Naval stuff? We have carrier so Base strike. Beginning of a new era is gone, which kind of sucks to leave behind, but that's okay. Unless in two weeks... Maybe we'll have a new president. Maybe, just maybe. We don't have a lot of uh, war sport, do we? No, we do not. Nice. Because we could definitely use more uh, Cass. Oh. Oh. Hello. Prepare for the inauguration. Hey, the American People's Commonwealth. And we have Bernard Sanders leading our nation, my friends. Oh, just completely changed your... Oh, completely changed everything. Whoa. I was not expecting that. It's okay. Pacifists or traitors? Dissolve the provisional Congress. Befriend military leaders. Oh, it's pacifists or traitors. Those among us that refuse to support the great American war are simply traitors to the social revolution. We must make sure that the American populace supports the cause lest we lose to, lose to the reactionaries in the South. But that's where we're going to end it here for today, and we have the national spirit, the war effort. But if you enjoyed today's episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will continue playing as the American People's Commonwealth with Bernie Sanders. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.